Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. What's good, everybody, man? I ain't more scary tales. Three prom night horror stories animated. Okay, we're gonna jump into it. We're gonna come together like some butt cheeks. Let's get started. <laughs> I got hospitalized two weeks before my prom. The doctor said I needed an immediate kidney transplant. Dang. My mom and dad thought they almost lost me. But lucky enough, I got matched with a donor, and the operation was successful too. Well, that's good. Even though I got my life back, it left me with a huge scar on my stomach. It was a major operation, and I was strictly prescribed to move in a wheelchair. Just when I was thinking to ask Marcus for prom, all my dreams shattered into pieces. I was crying while lying on the hospital bed a day before discharge, thinking I'm going to miss my prom. Because clearly, who wants to take a girl in a wheelchair as their prom date, right? Plenty of people. That's when I met Phil. He was a total stranger passing by my room when our eyes met. I ain't gonna lie, man. Phil looked like a look like a monkey. I ain't gonna lie. Like I like you can't we can't just sit here and lie. Y'all thought it too, bro. Man looked like a monkey, respectfully. Or disrespectfully. And he stopped right outside the door. Hey, are you alright? <laughs> I'm crying in a hospital bed. Do you think I'm alright? Yeah, stupid question. I I'm Phil. Jazz. Wow, uh, that's a beautiful name. I'm still recovering from a critical kidney transplant, so it's not the right time for you to flirt with me. You know, flirting while she's in the hospital um, bed. That's crazy. I mean it. I didn't reply and wiped my tears when Phil walked into the hospital room. He said in a hesitant voice, You are going to be all right, no? <sighs> yes. I will live, if that's what you're asking. Then why are you crying? Who is this because guy? Because I'm going to be in a wheelchair for a whole fucking month, and I just missed my prom. Yeah, that sucks. But if it's any consolation, you're in a hospital where not everyone gets a second chance at life. There was something about the way he talked that calmed me down. This is a random we guy just came in a room? time more, and slowly I started to feel a bit okay. Phil left abruptly, just like he came, and I didn't get the chance to get his number. I don't Good. know why talking to him, even for a brief moment, gave me a little relief that everything was going to be all right. I sat down every afternoon near my bedroom window and stared at the streets. I watched people laughing, kids Damn. playing, and teenagers my age chilling with their friends. She in the wheelchair. One That's afternoon, the I was talking to my best friend, Mala, who Snapchatted me about her prom dress. I was trying to be supportive of her, while the thought of not being able to attend my prom kept killing me inside. That's when I saw Phil again. He was riding his bike in my neighborhood. As soon as I saw him, I called out to him. Phil, over here! He looked up at me and gave me a charming smile. Monkeys can drive? For the next couple of days, Phil kept visiting me, and we became really good friends. I learned he works part-time at the hospital and attends night classes to finish high school. The more I spent time with him, the more I started to fall for him. My parents were pleased to see me smile and liked Phil probably more than me. We became close in a very short span. He would have dinner with us. He took me to the parks for a stroll. The best part was that even though I was in a wheelchair all the time, I felt good about myself when he was around. One night, home. my mom invited him over to have dinner with us. We were all eating quietly when my dad asked Phil. So, what are your plans after high school? Probably turn the part-time job at the hospital into a full-time one. Okay, and do you wish to attend college? Maybe. Uh, I'm an orphan, and things are not that easy for me right now. Uh, I'm sorry, Phil. Uh, I had no idea. It's okay, sir. Um, so, Phil, are you going to the prom? Phil looked at me and said, I don't know. I don't have a date yet. <laughs> My mom exchanged a smile with me and said, Then maybe you should get one. I remained quiet in embarrassment when Phil looked at my dad and said, I 
wanted to ask your permission to take Jasmine to the prom. What? Permission? Well, I have no problem, as long as Jasmine wants to go. Tears started to roll down. Permission? I ain't asking permission for nothing. Me personally, I better look. Prom coming up in a couple of days. I'm going to take your daughter, whether you like it or not. Me and her will be dancing. I don't know too much about her because she'll be in a wheelchair. But me and her will be on the dance floor. All right? I don't care what your blessing or not. That's just me, though. I'm just cut different. Down my eyes. Finally, Phil wants to take the girl in the wheelchair to her prom. We all laughed and discussed what I would be wearing. My life was full of joy again. The next few days passed like a dream, and the final night came. Okay. I wore a blush pink ball gown that kind of made me feel like okay. the most beautiful handicapped girl in the world. My dad dropped us at school, and they both helped me get down from the car. He drove off, smiling big at us, and Phil began to walk me to the party place. Everyone was looking their best, and the lights and music made it awesome. Phil and I danced for a while. I was grooving in the wheelchair she anyway. Got, she got to go to prom. After a half an hour of no nice. break fun, nice. we sat down in a dark corner of the room, right next to the back exit of the school. Phil suddenly grabbed my hand and kissed me. It was my first kiss also. And then he looked at me and said, I own a small cottage nearby. Would you like to see that? I had no idea you live near the school. Well, now you know. You know, I always wondered why I never saw you in school. I took Spanish night classes for two years. Jasmine, can we spend some private time, please? I blushed and nodded. He smiled and took me out through the back. I don't like that look, bro. While we came out on the empty streets, oh, I felt a str- Bro, just looked like a mix between a monkey and an alien, bro. He just looked like a, a intergalactic primate, bro. I'm sorry, bro. I just, I, every time I see it, it's just disgust, disgusting. Strong, smelly cloth coming at my face from behind. And then, everything went dark. When I woke up, I found myself sitting inside a smelly, tattered wooden cabin. Can't trust no and monkey, Phil, bro. Shinning a big knife standing right in front of my eyes. Not just a monkey. My stomach dropped as I saw his face. His caring eyes were now evil. Oh, you're not his human, bro. His smile was now a huge, disturbing grin. Drops of sweat appeared on my forehead. Phil? What's going on? He didn't talk to me, but walked toward me. My hands and legs were tied to the wheelchair, so I couldn't move. Then he grabbed me by the uh. hair and placed the knife on my neck. I started crying. Please, what is wrong with you? Why are you behaving like this? You have my mother's kidney, Jasmine. I want it back. I'm going to put her together and then bury her. What? Yes, just be... Quiet. This is my kidney now. I will slightly slit your throat, and you will quickly bleed to death. You won't feel a thing, I swear. And please, please, don't take it personally. <laughs> what? No more words came out of my mouth. I couldn't believe all these days were a lie. Right. I was living with some other Phil that never existed. A monkey. I closed Maniac. my eyes and Phil kissed me on the cheek. I prepared myself to die again when I heard a loud gunshot followed by a thump on the wooden floor. Please. I turned my head at the door and my dad was standing there oh, holding his gun. Perfect time. My dad works for the FBI and this is something we are prohibited from telling anyone. So obviously, Phil didn't know it either. I was saved again. My dad had found Phil's phone in his car after reaching home. The phone had been a pretty easy combination that took five minutes for my dad to crack for obvious reasons. And what he saw made his skin crawl in terror. There were selfies of Phil and a corpse sitting next to him. Uh. After investigating Phil's cabin, the cops did find the corpse of a woman who was later identified as his mother, and she had a kidney missing. 
Had my father not reached me in time, I would have surely yeah. been dead you this got time. Yeah, yeah, you would have got cut. That's that. Like, why would you even have a, a corpse of your mother, man? Your mama is dead, bro. Time I need a kidney. My kidney ain't gonna gonna get it. Get her back alive, bro. Uh, uh. This man tried to get it back in blood, literally. No, sir, man. Even even if he would have got the kidney, she's still not gonna come to life. You know what I'm saying? Like, come on, man. Luckily, dad came in and saved the day. I ain't gonna lie, man. Like I said, I ain't trust him from day one. Just a random guy just popping into a hospital room trying to trying to riz up the girl. Weird. That's I ain't I ain't never been to a hospital. I ain't never been to a hospital. Went to a random girl's room and try and try to sauce her up. It's a little weird, if you ask me. Especially when she on her on the hospital bed. That's kind of weird. That's weird. That's weird. But yeah, man. And then was just acting like he was all nice and kind for all them days just to try to slit her throat, bro. You right where your mama at. Dead. Sorry. That night was my prom. I was very excited. But let's face it, who wouldn't be? For the occasion, my parents had bought me a beautiful, long, light blue dress that combined perfectly with the makeup that my mother had put on me. <laughs> I didn't have a date, but that didn't really matter to me. I just wanted to have a good time and enjoy myself with my friends and classmates. When I arrived, everything was just as I imagined. That's the good. place was decorated with balloons and lights of different colors that illuminated the darkness. It was beautiful, and I was more than happy with it. Yeah. Faith, my nerdy girl, you finally arrive. Michelle, my best friend, who was wearing a short purple dress that night, approached me when she saw me enter. Hi, Michelle. You look beautiful. <laughs> you Don't too. What do you think? Just as you imagined, isn't it? Yeah. Well, except for the date. Don't worry, we'll find someone you can dance with. Ah, uh, but Drake is perfect. I'm so happy. <laughs> I know, I... Oh, right, I have to tell you. Come here. Michelle took me by the arm, and together we walked until we were a little away from the other people. Drake brought a bottle of alcohol. It'll taste great with the punch. Alcohol? But that's not allowed. Uh, so? Uh-huh. That's why he snuck it in. Yes. I don't know how, but he made it. Um... And you, are you going to drink? Of course. Come on, girl. It's our prom. We have to enjoy it. Time to get know, lit. Michelle, that's not part of the prom. Ugh, you're never going to change. What? Michelle stared at me in silence, as if she didn't want to say what she was thinking. But at the same time, she was judging me. You shouldn't do it, Michelle. You Party. Forget it. Just don't tell anyone, okay? My friend walked away from me, apparently upset. A little discouraged, I went to the table where the fruit punch had been placed. Just a Along sip. the way, I said hello to a few classmates. Hi, Jesse. What's up, Carl? Hey, Jacob. They all waved at me, but soon they were back in their world with their friends. After that, <laughs> a feeling of loneliness attacked me. I finally reached the table while sighing, but before I could grab a glass of fruit punch, someone spoke. Hello, Miss Faith. Next to me was a tall man with brown hair and eyes of the same color. He had a thick, well-groomed beard and glasses that helped him see better. In fact, that man was Mr. Williams, the okay. history teacher, okay. and personally, my favorite. Hi, Mr. Williams. What are you doing here? Wait a minute. The teacher smiled. Somebody's got to keep an eye on all of you, don't you think, Miss Faith? I immediately thought of Michelle. I just hoped they didn't find out what she was going to do. <laughs> yeah. I tore my gaze away from him and looked back at the punch. Were you going to have some punch? Yes, I'm thirsty. It's hot in here with so many people in a closed space. I agree with you, Miss Faith. Hmm. Look at this. Again, he got my attention. Mr. Williams was looking at a glass of punch in particular. He soon grabbed it and spun it around. On it, I could see A plus written in gold. Looks like it's here just for you, Miss Faith. I couldn't help but smile as I grabbed the special glass. Some in that drink. Thank you, Mr. Williams. You're welcome. It's what the brightest student of the generation deserves, after all. 
I drank the fruit punch while listening to the teacher. Oh, I almost forgot. Miss Faith, would you mind helping me? I looked at Mr. Williams in confusion. Of course. With what? We have prepared a special gift for you, and it'll be announced soon. We... Would you come with me so I can get everything ready? At that moment, nah. I looked around me. I was alone and didn't really know what else to do, so I had no problem helping him. Especially when it was a gift prepared for me. It's a surprise we always have for the best student of the generation. Oh, that's... For an instant, I felt a strong dizziness. Phil Cosby. But it right. soon went away. Miss Faith. I'm fine. Let's go. Mr. Williams smiled and started to walk toward the small stage. As I followed him, everything around me started to feel strange. The music was too loud, but fuzzy at the same time. My eyelids seemed yeah. to be very heavy, as were my feet. Going up the stairs, the dizziness increased. Everything was spinning. I managed to reach the backstage area, but after that, my body was unable to respond to my commands any longer. Mr. Williams? I fell on the floor hey. while the teacher was looking at me and passed out. Hey, put Molly on her fruit punch. She ain't even know it. Took her home and tried to enjoy that. She ain't even know it. That's crazy. Yeah, man. Tell my son, I got a, I got a surprise for you outside, man. You can show me in here. What the hell? Show me in here, bro. What we got to go outside for? Just us two, man. It just, it just felt creepy. After a while, I don't know how long exactly, I woke up. As I slowly opened my eyes, I noticed certain details. I was in a dark room, sitting on a chair with my hands and feet tied. Every part of my body felt heavy, as if I were exhausted. I didn't understand where I was, but when I saw my dress, I remembered everything. Hey. Suddenly, the door opened. Miss Faith? Mr. Williams, what's going on? Can you help me? He closed the door and approached. Help you? You're stupider than I thought. I had to have misheard. What? The brightest student? <laughs> Could you really believe that? You're nothing without good grades, Miss Faith. His hey. gentle face had completely changed. Now, he looked like a maniac. Always interrupting in class. Always trying to make it look like you know more than me. I, what? I never... You're nothing but a snooty little bitch, Miss Faith. What? That's why you became the perfect target. Target? You have no idea how much I'm going to enjoy this. Suddenly, Mr. Williams pulled out a sharp blade. Oh. Let's shut up that little mouth of yours once and for all. He opened my mouth with one of his hands. No! I bit him <laughs> as hard as I could. <laughs> Still going, he even feel it. Suddenly, in a quick and forceful movement, he brought the blade to my right hand and cut off one of my fingers. Oh! I started to scream, a moment that the teacher took advantage of to grab my tongue oh. and cut it. Oh! <laughs> Yo! As I cried and Dang! Me, he watched me with a kind of sick satisfaction. Unfortunately, my screams were not heard due to the music. That night, I died. Oh, bro. I think this is the first time, like, when they get kidnapped or whatever, they actually, this is the first time they actually die. That's crazy. Nah, he got to get caught. Nah, nah, nah. Somebody, he got to go to jail behind that. That's crazy. Cut her finger off and her tongue and just, I thought she was going to escape. The, 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 the lady died. That's crazy, bruh.
Like I said, that's the first time I've ever watched their stories and, and they haven't made it. Yeah, man. They got to do a better background check on these teachers, bro. This man is insane, bro. This man is, is nuts. What the? Nah, bro. Graduation parties have the reputation of being the happiest moment in a teenager's life. Even many years later, everyone remembers that party with a lot of happiness. That is not my case. I oh. just want to forget everything that happened. I thought that was a hand. Night. It was 1989. Graduation was only a week away, and I felt like I was the happiest girl in the world. Was she old? I was living at my cousin's house, a huge family of four girls and one boy who was my age and was going to graduate with me. My parents had died in a car accident when I was young, Dang. but my uncle, the pastor of a church, took care of me as if he were my father. He and I had a very good relationship, but the one who didn't get along so well with him was Fred, his only son. Fred, come here now. Ugh, what do you want now? The Jeffersons just called me. They saw you leaving their house. Give back all the money you stole right now! What? I don't know what you're talking about. I didn't steal anything. Do I have to repeat myself? They saw you, Fred! The money, now! Fred pulled some crumpled bills out of his pocket and threw them at his father. Dang. Happy? You made all this fuss just for this pittance. I'm as patient as I can be with you, but even my patience has its limits. Say goodbye to the prom. Are you out of your mind? You can't do that! He's right. This is too much. <sighs> All right, you can go to the prom, but I'll drive you. And you can't go to the dinner or the after party. The Dang. punishment was very harsh. But considering what Fred had done, nah, it seemed fair enough. Bresto money. The one who wasn't happy at all was Fred, who shouted in desperation, full of rage. You can't do this to me! I've been waiting for this fucking party all year! You're, you're a fucking scumbag! You can't ruin my life like this! I went over and spoke to him to try to calm him you down. You shouldn't have been stealing money! Relax, Fred. It could have... You shouldn't have been stealing money! How you gonna get mad at your dad when you the one did it? That's not his fault! That's your fault. It's been a lot worse. Furious, Fred locked himself in his room. The days flew by, and the prom had arrived. Fred still wasn't dressed, which caught my attention. I went up to my room to grab my purse, but suddenly, Fred stood in the doorway and stopped me. Linda, can you do me a favor? Of course. Do you want me to help you comb your hair? <laughs> Stay locked in here for a few minutes. Whatever happens, don't leave the room, understand? Fred, I'm a big girl. You don't have to protect me like this. I'll survive an argument between you and my uncle. Just listen nah. to me. It'll only take a few minutes. Okay, psycho. I'll wait here. Let me know when you finish the show, and we can go to the dance. Thank you. That said, nah, he Fred not going closed to survive the it. door and locked it. What the fuck? Hey, I never said you could lock me in. Fred just walked out. I jumped on my bed and let a few minutes pass. Oh, he about to catch a body. On the other side of the door, I heard screaming. And within seconds, a loud explosion made me get out of bed. After that noise, my aunt and cousin screamed. I heard the explosion again, and again, and again. With each explosion, there was one less scream. Until, Damn. with the last noise... He cleared out the whole lobby! Silence. Bro, that killed her kill death ratio crazy! I know that kill death ratio crazy, brother! What's that? Was like, what's that? Say? Four, four girls and a, and a guy. What's that? Plus the parents. What's that? Five o. Man, cleared out the whole lobby. You might have to put him on phase. After the silence, I heard the shower in the bathroom turn on. I didn't want to understand what was happening, but despite the shock I was in, I yeah. understood everything perfectly. I wanted to escape from that room, but I didn't have any windows, and I was afraid Fred would hear me banging on the door. I was too nervous to act, so I just waited. Within minutes, Fred opened the door, dressed in a suit. 
Thank you for waiting for me. Are you ready to go to prom? So it's Fred, what the hell were those noises? Where is everybody? You know they asked for it. Don't worry, Linda. You've always been good to me. I won't do anything to you. What the hell did you do? His look changed. Killed him. Now he looked angry. Nothing I wouldn't do to you if you were going to tell on me. Don't make me change my mind, and let's just go to the dance. Terrified, I went down the stairs with him, and there I saw them. My uncle's body Dang. was in the living room. I turned my head toward the kitchen and saw the bodies of my aunt and cousins piled up in a pool of blood. Oh my god. <laughs> I still have my father's shotgun in the car. I hope you can have a good night without talking too much, or you'll end up in a pile like them, understand? Terrified, I just nodded my head and walked, crying to the car. I'm going to the prom. <laughs> I'm crazy. so excited. It's crazy. When I got to the prom, crazy. I tried to act as calmly as possible. Fred was socializing and dancing naturally. That's just wild. Like he just he just killed all those people and act like nothing happened, bro. Man, I don't know how you I don't know how you could kill so many people and then just just still go on like nothing like it's just normal. How could he have such a good time after killing his parents? He even shot his little sisters, but none of them had done anything to him. Still gathering the strength not to cry, a friend approached me. Hey, Earth to Linda. Are you here? What? Oh, uh, yeah, sorry. What's wrong with you? You're on another planet today. I looked around, terrified, and spoke to her nervously. Listen, something terrible has happened. Fred... Oh, hello, Fred. When I turned around, Fred was behind me, looking at me angrily. Hi, girls. Are you having a good time? One of us is having a good time. Guess who? <laughs> it's not very difficult to tell. <laughs> hey, can I have some time with my cousin? Of course. See you later. Oh, wait. As she was leaving, my friend gave me a worried look. Brittany had known me since she was a kid. There was no way she wouldn't notice my reaction to seeing Fred. You were talking about me, right? Fred looked at me, smiling. Nah. But anyone paying attention could tell he was furious. Fred, you killed your parents and your sisters. This isn't right. You have to turn yourself in. Hey, shut up. Don't say that here. Listen, uh... You're right. I know what I did was unforgivable, and I plan to turn myself in by the end of the night, okay? Cap. Just come outside in two minutes, and let's talk about what happened. Okay. More than 30 no! years later, I think how stupid was my decision to listen to him. At that time, I was very innocent. I really thought my cousin was incapable of hurting me, even more than his parents. I waited a few... Bro, he just cleared out the whole lobby. Of course, bro. What you mean? He didn't think he was incapable. He cleared out the whole lobby. He had a six, seven, eight kill streak. Fatality. Like, bro, go outside. We could talk right here. You're talking to me right now. We could talk here. He just said he had a shotgun in the trunk. He about to put them. He about to put it on your back and boom. A few minutes, as he said, and went outside. I was a little worried, but there was no way he would dare to use the shotgun in such an open place like that. Yeah. When I went outside, a few guys were drinking, but there was no sign of Fred. I looked around for him. Suddenly, I heard a car accelerate, and by the time I realized, it was too late. Oh. A car was speeding toward me and slamming into my body. voice getting closer and closer and watching the car go when i woke up in the hospital Brittany was sleeping in a chair next to me some policemen arrived a few minutes later and explained that they had caught fred who had hit me in a stolen car before my friend's surprised eyes i told them everything that had happened and soon after they caught fred at an amusement park to this day, I still think how lucky I was 
to have only lost my legs. Dang. Fred was sentenced to 160 years in prison, but he is still trying to get out. I went to visit him once, and I could see that he was not remorseful at all. The only thing I can do is trust in the police, because if he ever gets out of prison, I know he will come for me. Nah. What was that, 1989? Man, probably about like 90 years old, man. Something like that. Regardless, he, that nigga old. But no, you good. That's, that's crazy, bro. This man got like a 7-8 kill streak. Cleared out the entire lobby, bro. That joint, that's better than any COD player I know. Apex player, player I know. Battlefield player I know. And then, Thomas and yo, let's, let's, let's go outside and talk, even though we're talking right now at the table. I mean, I guess, bro, what? What? But that, that, that like I said, that's it. This is pretty good. Um, You know, even though it's not the last one's the animation that I, I, I usually in, uh, like, it was actually pretty good. The animation was actually pretty good. I, en I enjoyed that animation. They need to keep them, whoever that is, keep them. But hopefully, guys, enjoy it. Quimax, A.K. Quay, bruh. And that's crazy. The, sec the second one actually died, bruh. That's literally the first time I've ever heard from these stories that the, the victim died, bruh. It's crazy. But hopefully, guys, enjoy it. Quimax, A.K. Quay. A.K. your favorite. Favorite. 